All right, this is Honors Algebra 2 Precalculus. We're doing 4.1 in precalc, which is radian and degree measure. So we're going to start off talking a little bit about what angles are. So an angle uh, is created by taking a ray, which is essentially a half line, right? It's a point and then an arrow in the other direction, and rotating about its end point, right? So if we take this blue ray, right, and we rotate it along this green curve, and we end at this red ray, uh, that's an angle, right? So the initial side is the starting location of the ray. Right, so this blue side, and the terminal side is the ending location. This thing right here, right, that end point of the ray is called a vertex. Uh, we say that an angle is in standard position if we take this same angle and we line it up so that the vertex is on the origin and the initial side is along the positive x-axis. Uh, the measure of an angle uh, is the number of degrees or radians, and we'll talk about radians shortly, uh, that a ray is rotated. Uh, positive measures indicate uh, counterclockwise, so this is a positive rotation, right? Uh, and a negative angle means that you're going clockwise, so uh, so counterclockwise for positive. Uh, and if you have any trouble remembering that, it's interesting because uh, this explains why the quadrants are numbered the way they're numbered. So if you've ever wondered why this is quadrant one and this is quadrant two and this is quadrant three and this is quadrant four, well, that's because they're talking about angle measures uh, starting at the positive x-axis. So uh, moving on. So there are two common types of angle measures. We'll talk about another one a little bit later, but there are two that we're going to focus on primarily in this video. So um, degrees, you're probably fairly comfortable with degrees. Uh, that's what you've used most of the time since your childhood. Excuse me. Whew. So um, if you say a 90 degree angle, most of us feel pretty comfortable that this is a 90 degree angle, right? Uh, 180 makes a line, right? And, and so on, 360 is a full circle. Um, so Degrees are what you're, you're probably in your comfort zone with, and when you write degrees, you either need this degree symbol, right, this 360 with a degree symbol at the top, or you need the word degrees. Uh, radians are what we're going to use more often in mathematics. So uh, this is the measure that you're going to use most of the time. Uh, you may never actually comfortably think in radians. You might always think in degrees and have to convert the value, uh, but you're going to find that we're using radians most of the time. So the way a radian works is if you take a radius of a circle, that's this green line right here. If you took that radius, like say it's a piece of string, and you stretch that green radius along the edge of the circle, that length is also r. The amount of the circle that is carved out in that motion is called one radian. So um, one way to think about this is that degrees is the thing you're more comfortable with, sort of like measuring things in inches, right? Because we live in America and we don't really use the metric system very much. But radians is more like the metric system in that it is way more useful uh, and functional in most cases in mathematics moving forward, but it's, it's just not what you're comfortable using. So uh, if an angle is written in radians, it can either have the word radians or rad, or it can have no units at all. So an angle with no units is implied to be radians. All right. So let's uh, walk through what we know about circles. So we know there's 360 degrees in a full circle. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm not actually boring myself. I'm just really tired while making this video. So 360 degrees in a full circle. We also know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, meaning 2 pi times the radius. So there are about 6.283 radius uh, values around the edge of a circle. And you can see that if we were to count, right? There's 1, 2, 3, and a little bit more than 3, and we'll talk about that in a sec, 4, 5, 6, and a little bit more than 6. Well, it turns out that the reason it's a little bit more than 3 is that this straight line from 0 to 180 degrees is from zero radians to pi radians. So that, that line that we would consider the negative x-axis is pi radians, right? Um, and if you were to go all the way around, you would get two pi radians, which again is a little bit more than six. So when we convert from radians to degrees, the easiest conversion factor is pi radians equal 180 degrees. You could also use two pi radians equals 360 degrees, but it's easier to use the simplified fraction. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Uh, I thought it would be worth just pointing out what the standard position angles are. So um, I frequently call these the corners of the unit circle. I realize it's a circle, so it has no corners. But um, So I think most of us are pretty comfortable that if this is 0 and we rotate here, we get 90, right? It's a right angle. And then another 90 degrees would be a buck 80, right? And then another 90 degrees is a 270. And then we rotate back to 360, which is the same spot as 0. If we're thinking in radians, uh, remember that a straight line, the 180 degrees, is pi radians. So that would make this half pi, or one half pi, or pi over two, right? Uh, here's pi. This would be three halves pi, or 1.5 pi, or three pi over two, right? And then a full circle is two pi. 
So what we're going to do now in example one is we're going to convert between uh, radians and degrees. So remember the conversion factor for radians to degrees is pi over 180 or 180 over pi. So this is in radians. So in order to cancel radians when I convert the units, I need the radians to go on the bottom and the 180 degrees to go on the top. The key here is that I need the radians to cancel. So uh, I'm going to get a 2 times a 180 times a pi all over a 3 times a pi. It's not an accident that the, the pi is cancel. Now you could make this a 360 over 3 and then divide, and that's totally fine. Or you could cancel the 3 and the 180 to get a 60 to get 2 uh, times the 60, which would be a 120. That says 120 degrees. Uh, in negative pi over 4, again, that's measured in radians, so the conversion factor I'm going to use is the 180 over pi, right? Because I want the radians to cancel, so the radians on the top cancels with the radians on the bottom. Uh, and I'm going to get that this is a negative 180 over 4, and then there's a pi over a pi, but they're going to cancel, and I get a negative 45 degrees. The negative, again, means the direction of rotation, right? Um, 3 pi, right? That's 3 pi radians, so I'm going to times by 180 degrees over pi radians. The radians are going to cancel, so are the pi's, and I'm going to get that this is 540 degrees. Now for the last one, I'm definitely using a calculator. This is radians, so again, I'm going to times by 180 over pi. But I'm going to type that in my calculator. So over here, I'm going to do 3.578 times 180 divided by pi. And since that's an approximate answer, I'm going to put a squiggle, right? This is the approximately symbol, not equal. And I'm going to round or truncate to the thousandths place, which in this case turns out to be the same answer. All right. So you're going to go ahead and try a P1. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, again, these are in radians, so I'm multiplying by the 180 over the pi because I want the units to cancel, right? So that's what I'm doing every time here. I'm multiplying by a 180 over pi, right, uh, to get those radians to cancel. And the last time, again, I'm going to have to use a calculator, right? Um, and I want the radians to cancel. So uh, in all of these situations, radians cancel. So in the first one, I'm going to get a 7 times a 180 all over a 6 and then a pi over a pi. So the reason I wrote it that way is I would suggest that you cancel the 180 and the 6 to get a 30. So you're going to get a 210. Um, it's harder to do if you do 7 times 180, because I don't know what that, uh, you know, what that is off the top of my head, and then I have to divide by 6. It's no fun. Here the pi's are going to cancel. I'm going to get negative 180 divided by 3, which is a negative 60. Right, and again, make sure you have that degree symbol or the word degrees, right? Uh, 7 pi over 2. So I have a 7, a 180, uh, and, an, and a 2 on the bottom, right? And the pi's are totally going to cancel. So I'm going to end up getting, I would again cancel the 180 with the 2 to get a 90. So I'm going to get 630, because I really don't know what 7 times 180 is. I don't feel like doing it. Now for the last one, I'm going to type it in the calculator, right? So we have a 2.341 times 180 divided by pi. And that's going to give me a 134.129. All right, so now we're going to do the reverse, right? So now we're converting from degrees to radians. So what that means is that it's the pi that goes on the top because I need the degrees on the bottom to cancel, right? So now degrees cancel. I get a 36 over 180 times a pi. Well, if I cancel the 36 and 180, I get a 1 -fifth pi radians, or you could write that as a pi over 5. You don't have to write radians, right? You can just write pi over 5. Um, if you don't write units on an angle, it is assumed to be radians. Uh, if I do the same thing here, I do the 180 uh, on the bottom, right, because I want to cancel the degrees, cancel the degrees. Uh, I'm going to end up getting, uh, these both have a 60 as a factor, right? So I'm going to get a negative 2 thirds pi or a negative 2 pi over 3. Again, you can write units, but you don't have to. Uh, 390, right, again, pi radians over the 180 degrees. The degrees will cancel. I think that they both have a 30. Right? I think if I take out a 30, I get a 13 on the top and 6 on the bottom. So I think I get 13 pi over 6. So 13 6 pi or 13 pi over 6, either of those would be fine. It's a 13. All right. Uh, and then the last one, I'm definitely using a calculator, right? I'm typing in pi 
uh, times 180, and then I'm going to put the squiggle because I know that that pi is going to make it irrational. So uh, 37.512 times pi divided by 180. So really the whole key to these problems is whether you are uh, whether you're multiplying or dividing by the pi and the 180, right? Like which one's on top. So it's either going to be a 0.654 or a 655 because you'll round or truncate to three places. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. So you go ahead and do the same thing that I just did. Uh, again, we're trying to get to radians. So I'm going to do pi over a 180, right? I can cancel the degrees. So I think 54 and 180 both have a, they definitely have a 9 in common. Uh, that would be a 6 over 20, so they have more than a 9. They have an 18. So this is a 3 pi over 10. I think that checks out. Yeah. Uh, so I get 3 pi over 10. Uh, negative 315, right? It times by the pi over 180 degrees. Uh, these guys cancel. Uh, that has a 45 in it. Um, that should be a negative 7. Yep. 7 pi over 4. Um, 450, right, if I multiply by pi over 180, they both definitely have a 90, so it's a 5 over 2, right, so, uh, so I get 5 pi over 2, all right, and then for the last one, I'm going to go ahead and type that in my calculator, right, uh, so we'll do, uh, I might just do second enter because I'm lazy and I can over type, uh, 37 with an 82.362. All right, and I get 1.437. All right, so let's go ahead and keep moving. Uh, all right, so let's talk about co-terminal angles. So co means to share, right? Like a co-worker shares a workspace, right? To co-operate is to operate together or to collaborate, right? Uh, so all of those things mean share or together. So co-terminal means shares a terminal side. So co-terminal angles are angles that are in standard position, meaning they already share the initial side, right? Um, that also share a terminal side. So here are three uh, angles, uh, theta, alpha, and beta, right? Um, so so th alpha is a little blue one that's just a little acute angle, right? Um, theta is the angle that goes all the way around uh, from that spot around an extra circle, right? So, so we start at the initial side, we pass the line we got, we keep going around until we get to the same spot. That's theta. And then beta is the angle that I actually go the other direction, right? Instead of going uh, counterclockwise, I go clockwise, and I work my way around to the same terminal side, right? Um, so alpha, theta, and beta are all coterminal. Alpha is a positive acute angle, right? Uh, theta is over 360, but is also a positive angle, and beta is a negative angle. So we can find coterminal angles really easily by adding or subtracting full rotations or full circles, right? So let me give you an example. Um, if we look at the positive, uh, so let's look at the angle 30 degrees, right? So, so here's roughly where 30 lives, right? So that's, a, that's approximately 30 degrees. We'll call that angle 30 degrees. Um, if I go from 30 degrees and add a full circle, that was a terrible circle, but you get, you get the idea. So if I do the 30 plus a full circle, I get a 390, which is also a coterminal angle, right? So, so essentially, um, hang on, let's make that slightly nicer because it's tragic. Okay, so, uh, so if I start here and I go a full 360 and then the extra 30, you see that the red angle is 390, right? Because it's the 360 plus, oh, hey, let's go an extra 30. If going in the other direction, right, if in the other direction, I say, hey, let me start here and go backwards, well, it's like Pac-Man, right? I make my way all the way backwards, and I go almost the whole circle, but I'm missing out on this 30 degrees, right? Um, so essentially, uh, I've subtracted 360, right? Uh, so or the other way to think about it is that you started here and went backwards 360, right? So start here, subtract 360, you end at the same spot. Um, so there are infinitely many coterminal angles. You could basically just go around the circle as many times as you want. So we can write this as 30 plus 360 times n. So I could give you a coterminal angle that looks like this. That's coterminal. That means you went around the circle a lot of times, like so many times. I'm not going to do that, right? So many, so many times. But you could go around the circle millions and millions of times and end at that spot, and it would also be a coterminal angle. Now, in radians, it's the same concept, but in radians, we're adding 2 pi, right, because that would be a full circle. So if we look here, right, so pi over 6 is the same as 30 degrees. It's the same spot as 30 degrees. So if I wanted to go to the same spot, 
I could take that pi over 6 angle and I could say let me also go an additional full circle. Well that would be pi over 6 plus this full circle. Well pi over 6 plus 2 pi, if I make everybody over 6 with a common denominator, would be pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, so I get 13 pi over 6, that's the red angle. Alternately, if I started here and went backwards 360 degrees or 2 pi, right, I would get pi over 6 minus the 2 pi because I went the opposite direction. So it's pi over 6 minus a 12 pi over 6, which is a negative 11 pi over 6. So they're the same angle, uh, the same terminal side, but they're, but they're not the same angle, right? Uh, so there are infinite mini coterminal angles uh, this way too. Again, it would just be pi over 6 plus 2n pi uh, because remember 2 pi is a full circle and n means n full circles, right? So that's the idea, right? So 2 pi n or 2 n pi. All right, so uh, we're going to find, uh, for each angle, we're going to find two coterminal angles, one that's positive, one that's negative. Now, remember that there are infinite right answers here, right? But the easiest way to do this, I'm just going to call this one theta 1, right? And I'm going to say it's a buck 20 plus a full circle, right? So that's going to be a 480. And then a negative angle, that would be coterminal, sorry, that's a theta, not a q, uh, would be a 120 minus a full circle, which is a negative 240. So those are two coterminal angles, right? If we do the same thing here, uh, I would take my theta 1. Again, I didn't mean to make it a q. All right, theta 1 would be a 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Well, that's a 7 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, if I get a common denominator. So that's a 19 pi over 6. There's my positive coterminal angle. My negative coterminal angle would be 7 pi over 6 minus 2 pi, right, which would be 7 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6, or 7, uh, sorry, negative 5 pi over 6. Um, and that's the answer. Now, there are infinite right answers. Those are the two easiest ones, right? There, I could have subtracted 20 full circles, but I subtracted 1 because it was the easiest option. All right, so you give the same thing a try. Uh, certainly pause me if you want to do it without me. And this is our last uh, problem in this video before we do uh, a second video. So I'll call this theta 1, right? It's a buck 35 plus a full circle, right? So that should be, I believe, 495, right? Um, and if I go the other direction, right, it's going to be a buck 35 minus a full circle, which I think is a negative 225. All right, um, and let's see if we go the uh, to the radian one, right? So this is my theta one will be a two pi over three plus two pi, which is two pi over three plus six pi over three, right? I got a common denominator or nine. That's not a nine. That's an eight. Eight pi over three. All right, there we go. Come on, brain. All right, and theta two would be two pi over three minus a full circle. Right, that's 2 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, which is a negative 4 pi over 3. And again, infinite right answers, but those are the two easiest. All right, that's it for that video.